Welcome to World of Weird! <laughs> We've gone around the world to report back on the peculiar! She's totally blissed out! <laughs> the unusual! This has been the weirdest day of my entire life. And, well, the weirdest things that we can find. He's axing him to his arm! He's gonna chop his arm off! It's all right, he's got another one. Right, coming up on tonight's show, Brent Zillwood gets cocky. Oh, I'm moving your dick. Ah! Feels really nice, actually. <laughs> Vicky Patterson gets all cuddly. I love falling in love, mate. It's the best. I fall in love practically everywhere I go. Possibly the greatest fitness regime on earth. Enjoy each day the prancer size way. And Bobby Mare sucks off a dog. An imaginary dog, obviously. We're not perverts. But first, Michelle DeSwart is in America, discovering that anger is hard to manage. When I get really angry, I just go for a stroll in some peaceful woodland near my home. Hmm. And shout at shit. <coughs> Bloody dear. Stupid crow. And you can fuck off too, you fluffy tail twat. Yeah, you better run. But elsewhere you can do this. No, they aren't delivery drivers for the things you ordered online. They're people who are getting rid of their rage by smashing the crap out of an entire room full of stuff. Basically doing what I do if I spend more than 10 minutes on Twitter. There's one such place in Dallas, Texas. So Michelle de Swartz signed the risk assessment and went to check it out. I'm not quite sure what the point of like an anger room is. If you need to go there weekly and smash stuff up, you should probably talk to someone. I would take the British approach, which is don't get angry, get drunk and get a stomach ulcer. Just keep that inside. You keep all that anger inside. To find out more, I'm meeting Anger Room's entrepreneur, Donna Alexander, who charges people to release their anger by letting them smash things into a million little pieces. You are the original Anger Room. Yes. How did it start, other than just like some major PMT? <laughs> well, basically, I came up with the idea when I was 16 years old, growing up on the south side of Chicago. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of violence and anger going on there, so I figured that if they had a place for people like that, that can tear up stuff, release that stress, that not only would I help our overpopulation of the jail system, but I would ma help make the world a better place. So in 2008, I started to do test trials in the garage of my home, and I would let people break stuff for five bucks. And it got so popular that they started telling their friends, and then I started to get strangers at my home. So when I got strangers, I knew I had a business, and I needed to do something about it. So that's kind of like how the anger room got born. Yeah. And what do you think about people that do get that angry, where they have the need to smash stuff up? It's kind of like a temper control. So you, if you feel that you're getting mad enough to break all this stuff, go ahead, come to the anger room and break all the stuff. Yeah. But then try to find out other ways to cope with your anger and your temper. See what's triggering it and then yeah. try to eliminate that trigger. In the firing line are various recycled and donated goods that look like a prize haul from a this morning phone-in. After I helped set it all up, I met one of their regular clients. So you're getting ready to to enter the anger room? I am. Are you stressed? Uh, yeah, I am. Why? I have a fashion show coming up on Sunday and two designers just dropped out and uh -huh. we just got a call about a DJ not being available. Pretty stressful. Very stressful. How long do you think you're gonna spend in there? Uh, I'm gonna say 10 minutes. Ooh. Maybe more. Maybe more. How long do you normally spend in there? I could, I could go 30. If I, if I could be verbal, I'd probably go 30. If you could be verbal, yeah. what does that mean? Um, talk smack. Think, okay. of, think of the objects as things or people and just really lash out. What are you going for? We're going to go with the good old Louie. My adrenaline's already pumping. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what happens when fashionistas get furious. Oh, crap! Ah! Ah! Baby! <laughs> So he had it in him. That's for you. He's doing amazing, I suppose. Good job. Are you doing all right? Woo! Okay, yes! Woo! Yes! Are you, are you finished? 
finished! No! This is for Donald Trump! Come on, Hillary! There's Justin, literally hitting the campaign trail. I think tears, uh... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Woo! That's crazy, I love it! How did that feel? Oh my goodness. Was it amazing? Felt great. Do you feel less stressed? I feel less stressed. Oh my God, yeah? What was your favorite part about it? Uh, favorite part was definitely taking this bat to the computer screen, watching the sewing machine just go bye-bye. Yeah. Can I have a hug? Absolutely. I just feel like I should hug you. Can we please speak about Justin? I was not expecting it. He's, um, he's filled with so much rage. <laughs> I don't know if this really raised anything in me other than just being like, it's awfully messy and we just destroyed a lot of good equipment. You know, there was a sewing machine. It was a perfectly good sewing machine. And now it's fucked. Hey, this makes me a bit sad. I can't wait to have a go. <laughs> I thought every room is an anger room when I'm in a bad mood. But it turns out that's not quite the case. Ah! Oh! Ah! 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 It's not for me. It just makes me really uncomfortable. Oh, I just... It's so loud! Yeah! We broke so many things! Yeah! It's and so I, messy! And I can listen to when you broke the first thing, and then when you broke the second one, your tempo went up. Did from it? From the sound, you started breaking quicker when you got to your second item. Because I wanted it to be over. <laughs> I was like, ah! I've got to do all of this! Uh, uh, uh. I'm sure... There are some people out there and it, and, and it will bring them a huge amount of gratification. Me, personally, I honestly thought I was gonna go in there like a bad bitch, just like, yeah, I've got this, I've got a baseball badge, I have to smash up some stuff. I was like... Yeah. The difference between Justin and myself, you know, Justin clearly loved it, got a kick out of it, and he came out and he seemed rejuvenated. And I, I've come out and I'm just like, I think I need to call my mum, mum. Seriously. Workout fads sweep the globe with alarming regularity. Pilates, hot yoga, Zumba, all stuff I can't be arsed with. But how about a bit of horsing around? Let's saddle up for a fitness craze that's cantering through America. Prancercise. Yes, it's an exercise regime to get you in shape by cantering like a horse, then wafting your arms like a horse. It was invented by this fine filly, 64-year-old Joanna Warback from Florida. Let's get the mission statement straight from the horse's mouth. Let's stop talking and do some walking. It's better to be punching at a vision than the real thing. For one, your knuckles won't sting. The prancer size box works like a charm to tone your arm. I beg your pardon? Enjoy each day the prancer size way. That all sounds lovely, but what exactly is prancer sizing? Prancer size is a springy rhythmic movement forward, similar to a horse's gait and ideally induced by elation. The only exercise that induces elation in me is walking to the fridge and eating a family-sized trifle with my hands. How I developed Prancercise was this. I was power walking in Hollywood, Florida along the beach. My body started to just take a uh, movement of its own accord. I found myself rocking side to side, stretching my legs for maximum uh, stretch. I got a lot of attention. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. So I decided to really focus on this and see where it could go. Well, as Joanna would say, enough talking, let's get walking. Squeeze yourself into the nearest bit of lycra because here come the four pillars of Prancercise. So let me demonstrate the walk for you. OK. You're going to spring off the ground more now. 
and your, the music, when it picks up and transitions, you can go into a truck. I'm not quite sure what to say. Okay, now we're going to do the Prancer Size Gallop. Is she making it up as she goes along? Uh, the Prancer Size Box. I'm moving forward, punching into space. Joanna raced into the headlines when her YouTube video went viral thanks to her cantering, her expert grasp of horseplay and remarkably, um, nimble footwork. All of a sudden, my hits on YouTube went from like a few hundred to like thousands, like almost overnight. In fact, she's now had over 12 million hits. So it's no wonder Joanna has attracted a legion of passionate, prancer-sizing pupils. Joanna is freaking awesome. She is a great, great teacher, and she will teach you the way. I've done prancer size on the Golden Gate Bridge, and I've done it on the beach, and I always get lots of smiles. Believe it or not, you might watch it and think, oh, that looks easy, until you actually start prancing, and then realize that, you know what, it is really a full body workout. It's brilliant, but be careful. If you trip while you're out prancing, chances are you'll be put down by a vet with a shotgun. From Florida to the UK, Prancer size all the way. Here's a bet for you. Prance about in any British city, and two to one, you won't last ten minutes. Still to come. Oh, oh, sorry, that was poorly phrased. Bobby Mayer meets the most skilled people in the world at having it off with thin air. Nice technique, Bob. Plus, cheeky cuddles. Don't mind me. Get your cuddling on the go, son. And a cock face. Oh, my God. Great <laughs>to World of Weird. We're returning to Texas. This time it's the capital, Austin. The city's unofficial slogan is Keep Austin Weird. But that's not why we've sent this man there. It's to find out about this. The Air Sex World Championships. You've heard of air guitar? Well, this phenomenon sweeping the USA is air sex. A bit like my teenage years. You shag me nothing but have a very active imagination. Ultimately, what I do is, like, my fantasies. I have to go into a deeper place inside of myself and say, what do I want to bring out that I've never done before? It's an adrenaline rush. The best part about air sex is it shows how stupid and idiotic sex can look. Don't knock it till you've tried it for real, mate. But when it comes to the job of having idiotic pretend sex in a room full of strangers, one man's edges encrusted CV rose to the top of the pile. Bobby Mayer. Compared to stand-up comedy, I think air sex is going to be easy. You know, I'm not trying to make people laugh. I'm just trying to look like I'm trying to make someone come, and that's a lot easier. Bobby's in Austin to meet founder and host of the World Air Sex Championships, Chris True. Chris. Possibly the outcome of a one-night stand between ZZ Top and a librarian started the Air Sex Championships eight years ago. There is nothing this man doesn't know about pretending to do all kinds of dirty stuff to someone who isn't actually there. And if I'm going to win this year's championships, I must learn from him like an air sexing Yoda. Hi, right, Chris, why are you doing the Air Sex Championships? So it started off as like a one-time parody of Air Guitar Championships. And we saw this video of people in Japan who were doing what looked to be a very sad air sex show. And then we just thought, what if we took that and just turned up all the fun parts of it? <laughs> so there's no nudity, no orgasms. Has anyone ever broke those rules? Oh, well, sure. People get swept up in the moment. They take more clothes off than they should. But, you know, we advise against it because we don't want people to come to an air sex show in order to like, get horny. And the other major rule of the air sex championships is that all climaxes must be simulated and yeah. not real. So we want you to not have an actual orgasm. Has that ever happened? Has anyone actually ejaculated? People claim they have, but I've never seen it on the stage. And so I think that rule remains intact. So do you tour it around? How far have you taken air sex? Typical tour is about 20 cities. And then we fly all the best of the best down to Austin, Texas to compete for the national championship every December. I just don't want to suck when I do this. Like come to Austin and just embarrass myself in the wrong way. Do you have any tips? You gotta go deep inside yourself. Okay. You have potential to be the best nothing fucking motherfucker of all time. But to get to that point, I need you to get in the motherfucking air sex zone.
okay? If you do that, I think you stand a chance. Thank you. Talking to Chris has definitely made me reconsider what my performance is gonna be. I need to go on this quest. I need to dig into myself, find the part of me that's gonna allow me to be the world air sex champion. You gotta go deep inside yourself. You're the greatest fucker in the world. Get rid of all this doubt and fear. Cleanse yourself. I believe in you. Like a shampoo advert, a dark, horrifying one. Chris was right. I just needed to go find myself. I feel I've got a genuine shot at the title, but before I compete, I'm going to meet last year's champion, Roxy Castillo. The thing about last year's champion, they are last year's champion. Get ready to taste defeat as well as air cock, Roxy. So, Roxy, you are the 2015 World Air Sex Champion. How did you get into that? It was just something I drunkenly did. It was not anything that I prepared for, but it's really cool that I was the best at having sex at nothing. So you do burlesque also, right? Yes. So yeah. you, how does burlesque compare to air sex? Air sex is just more raunchy. I don't feel as poised and put together when yeah. I'm just like, there's 11 dicks in front of me. Let me play them all like a piano. So are you going to compete again this year against Absolutely me? Absolutely I am. I want to beat you. How can I beat you? OK, show me some moves. What do you have? I'm what do you got the, so far? I'm here. There, we're on near a street. I don't want to just air you sex. you got to be able to air sex anywhere. Uh, 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 see? That's why I'm the world yeah, champion. The, 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 the penis you were miming was very small. I would mime a larger. Just, there uh, we go. They just both just ejaculated. I swallowed it without even noticing because that's how good I am. That was pretty good. I'll give you that. Thank you. I'm going to beat you. Well, you showed her, Bobby. So you really think you can hypothetically hunt better than anybody else? Yeah, I'm pretty confident in my ability to air sex. You know, I've had sex with many people, and air seems less demanding for sure. There's no like, oh, you're doing it wrong, you're on my hair, leave please. Since I started smoking and taking antidepressants, my real life sexual proficiency has really dropped off, you know? I'm lucky if I can have one orgasm in three days. But in terms of air sex, it's a whole new world, you know? I'm back to being 14. I can do this for days. Not a great Tinder profile, Bobby, but with that confidence, you're bound to win. All the confidence I had earlier is gone. I'm now very nervous to compete in what amounts to an air sex karaoke competition. I feel like it's something I've never done before and I don't have any control over how they're gonna react, so I'm just a bit scared. Welcome to the Austin, Texas Air Sex Championship! We're gonna have sex with the air, and it's gonna be something. It might not be good. This is not a fucking game, people. Let's do this. So, here are the rules. The contestants perform to their chosen song. The judges pick their top three, then the audience will decide who's going home with the championship. I need y'all to make the most noise for our very first contestant. Harder, start, tight, end! Roxy Castillo! the opposition, we're all giving the air the sort of considerate and gymnastic lovemaking that makes me realize I'm in way over my head. I'm shitting myself. But then the time comes for me to make Britain play. We do have another contestant coming up right now. I need y'all to please make a shitload of noise for the Pleasure King. Hello, Pleasure King. Hello. How are you doing? I'd like you to know that there's a dog, a horse, and a lot of men. Tonight, or here on the stage, right now, the 
men are behind me, the dog's in front of me, the horse is to my right. Keep that in mind. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for your next contestant. This is the Pleasure King! <laughs> And snuggled up. You have essentially got loads of girlfriends. You're a massive player. And Brent Zillwood fannies about. This is probably the fucking weirdest thing I've done in the 24 years I've been alive. I hope he's using protection. <sighs> Welcome back to World of Weird. Bobby Mare is in Austin, Texas, going balls out in the World Air Sex Championships. But was his horse, dog, several man orgy enough to get him into the final three? Over to the judges. Uh, of course, number one is our our, our good friend Roxy Castillo. Get your saucy buns up here again. Final number one, Roxy Castillo. Here. Get over here. I mean, you guys, that was that was a true adventure. And of course, easily, we love you, Uncle Buck. Come on. We Uncle love Buck you. is up here. Alright, and our third finalist. On the Pleasure King! The horse, the dog, and all the decks, yeah. Pleasure King, congratulations! Love the Pleasure King. Congratulations! We love Watch out, his dick is gonna fall out any minute. That's why we love it. <laughs> I wasn't very surprised the judges picked me, and I kind of expected it, you know, they gave me really good feedback. It was like being on X Factor, except um, less shame. Now, it gets really tense. The three of us go head to head, trying to impress the crowd with our bogus bonk. Finalists, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Audience, are you ready? Make some noise! <laughs> You know what? There can only be one champion tonight, ladies and gentlemen. That breaks my fucking heart because there's three people up here on the stage. I think they all deserve it. But it comes down to this. I need you to make the most noise for the individual that you want to see go home with the title. Is our winner tonight, Roxy Castillo. Make some noise. Is our winner, the Pleasure King. Is our winner, Uncle Fuck Fuck Truck. It's all very emotional. I didn't win, but I came so close. I never really felt more proud of myself. The better woman won, and at least Roxy didn't beat me. I would do air sex again, uh, only under the conditions that I knew I would win. I don't really like to lose. But this time, I did lose. So these imaginary shaggers can go fuck themselves. Time to head to Tokyo. Now, apparently, many Japanese under 40s are far too busy for conventional relationships, dating, and even sex. To be fair, if someone invented a vibrator that could bleed radiators, we'd all be a bit happier. We've sent Geordie Shaw's jungle queen, Vicky Patterson, to Tokyo to discover what length some people will go to to fill the emotional gap in their lives. It seems many people here are going for instant love, and loads of businesses have sprung up to cater for that need. Oh. 
first, I'm off to one of Tokyo's many porn emporiums where you can buy a love pillow, which allows you to cuddle up to the fantasy girl of your dreams. Provided the girl of your dreams has freakishly enormous eyes. Bit different from the SpongeBob duvet cover I've got at home, right? These must be the pillowcases for your love pillow. You can choose whatever you fancy. You like the old gingers, the fire crotch. It's there as well. It is for everyone here. Apart from the fucking normal. This shop sells over a thousand pillows a year, and I want to find out what the attraction is. So, what exactly is a love pillow? Most people buy them to sleep with. Mm. Yeah. Is it just hugging? Or do some people neck on with them? Some people. <laughs> So, out of all of these, which one is the most popular? Mm. Most people buy this one for the artist, not the character. You say, if it was me, I'd be picking it for the carpets, the breasts. No, it's about the face. Oh, it's all about the face. Okay, sorry, I'm taking the it to the eyes. Dog. Yeah, it's the eyes. Oh, mm. is that what you call them, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Can I say the 3D one? Whoa! I thought it was just going to be like a pillow. <laughs> It's a mouse mat. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's me dad's Christmas present sorted. Anyway, I'll leave the mouse boobs alone and grab myself a pillow. This is my new love pillow. Mm. I'm going to call her Sheila. Well, I'm confused if I'm honest because she's looking happy. Cute little smile, Sheila there. Little bit of cleavage showing. Sexy undies. Panty flash. Then when we turn it over, what the fuck's happened to Sheila? She's crying. There are tears. She's lost her top. Oh, in fact, she's lost everything. This isn't right. I'm turning that version of Sheila away. Nobody wants to see it. Poor, poor Ben. You shouldn't be naked and crying. Not unless you've had a night out on the gin. But if you thought cuddling inanimate objects was weird, what about paying for the real thing? My next stop is a cuddle cafe, where men can pay beautiful women to hug them. You don't get that in your local coffee shop, do you? I'm meeting the owner Shinji in this really easy to find and not at all dingy location above a computer shop. Hello. Hello, are you okay? Oh. I'm Vicky. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come in, yeah? Whoa! Just going to throw straight in, straight in at the deep end like that then, eh? Oh, am I going in here, am I? Yeah. It's not what I was expecting. <laughs> this is a little bit like, um, like a crash. But I need to know exactly what goes on here. So I know it's cuddling. Ah, so you need to Yes, it's cuddling. But a lot of customers come here for a chat. They can watch TV and play games. It's like having a girlfriend over at their house for a date. Yeah, it does just sound like sound like a, a date. Well, the type of dates I would go on when I was about 14 or something. I mean, I'm really passionate about cuddles. I don't know if you can tell. So I'm a big fan. I think I might prefer cuddles to sex. Can, can we hug? Oh, we can! <laughs> what a buzz. Feels like the right place to do it. Thank and I you. feel like you're, like, professional in grading, <laughs> so what would you give us out of 10 on that hug? <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. hug! Yes! <laughs> you're a legend. Let's go meet some lass who cuddles geese, that's how the last in question is 21-year-old Nicole. Oh, we checked her ID. Nice to meet you, nice to she is one of ten women who works in the cafe and has been here for three months. Well, so what, I need to know what it's like working here. Mm. It's good. I enjoy, I enjoy it. it. It's good. The cuddle calf has a menu, but instead of a latte and a jammy dodger, you're shelling out 15 quid for a five-second cuddle. Then there's the variety of extras that Nicole is going to demonstrate. Can you tell me what this is? Is this just a straight-up cuddle? Mm. Just show me something. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Right, okay, next one. Yeah, you show me by all means. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a tickle. Uh, this one. Uh huh. Oh, Using my bottom as a pillow. He sleeps on your bum. <laughs> Best not fart. Do you know what I mean? Last one. This one is wearing costumes. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned oh, the costumes because oh, oh. I've got them here. <clears throat> Which one? on this page, out of all these costumes, is the most popular. What have you had to wear the most? Nurse. The nurse? Right, OK, nurse, mm. that's good, that. If you're paying eight quid for a stroke on the head, you probably need medical help. Just behind me, we've got our first customer of the day. Anyway, Nicole's just chatting. Let's all build a bit of rapport. 
She's asking him what he's after. Oh, it's fucking weird. Honestly, like, I'm trying not to feel like this is bizarre, Maybe but it's bizarre. Nice. He seems all right. He seems OK. I um, hope you don't mind this. It's no extra charge, mate. What a buzz. I mean, I don't, I don't mean to sound like a cliche, mate, but do you come here often? <laughs> yes, I often come here. Well, normally when you come, do you just get the chats and the cuddles? What's your, what's your bag, mate? I suppose that's a question I'm asking. What's your thing? Spending time here is different from my usual life. Normally, I would never be able to be with such a gorgeous girl. Don't mind me. Crack on. Do 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 a bit. Get your cuddling on the go, son. I really wanted to hate it because the concept is so alien to me. You can't ignore the fact that there are cuddly toys and bright colours and action figures everywhere. That is weird, but at the base of it, it's it's just people searching for intimacy, instant gratification immediate ways to get that intimacy they want without having all the strings. I like the strings. The strings are what make it the best. They're missing out without the strings. Oh, we all need cuddles, especially us lasses. Up to now, everything I've seen has been predominantly male-driven, but Susan Mia here runs a company that gives women in Tokyo a male shoulder to cry on or arms to sleep in. As I understand, your business is for women. Yes. We don't provide sexual services, but women like to chat about things that they can't talk to their partners or friends about. The divorce rate is soaring in Japan at the moment, and some women feel they can't be totally honest with their husband or boyfriend, so they need a mental partner to relieve the stress in their life. I can sort of see the point. I think it's time for me to have a go. The men you can hire are called rose sheep because like roses, they're all pretty, fresh and young. And sheep, because like cow and sheep, they'll help you fall asleep by listening about your day, all in the comfort of your own bed. I'm really nervous. Oh, God. I don't know how I'm going to deal with this. I've never, like... Because this, this is like paying someone to be with you, isn't it? It's like paying someone to spend time with you. And I just... I mean, that's the last thing I want to do. I want someone to like me for me. I'm really, feeling really awkward. And I don't know this bloke at all. And that level of intimacy with someone I don't know, that makes me uncomfortable. Coming up, Vicky meets a mythical beast, a man who's willing to hear about your day, actually gives a shit, and isn't just trying to get into your pants. And she's quite taken with him. Girls are going to fall in love with you, you know. That's a fact. Plus, whatever the hell is going on here. Welcome back to World of Weird. Vicky Patterson's in Tokyo to see how Japanese people fill emotional gaps in their lives, including a service where ladies can hire a bloke to come over, give them a cuddle and have a chat. Now she's about to get into bed and unload her problems with a handsome young Japanese man. Basically an escort without the nobbing. My sheep's a very dishy 24-year-old psychology student called Shingo. I've got him for 130 quid for two hours. But if you've really got something to range about, 650 quid will get you 60 hours. Hundreds of women, most of whom in the 30 to 40 age group, have signed up for a cosy little cuddle and a chat with a handsome sheep. Shingo wastes no time okay. getting me in his arms. Like, don't get us wrong, you're, you're a lovely looking geezer. But, like, I wouldn't, I, I don't think as a woman I'd feel comfortable in this position unless. Unless I'd met you before, unless I'd had drinks with you in a bar. The women who the women who meet you, they just meet you for the first time, talk to you about their feelings, they talk to you about their day. Because we're strangers, it's easier to talk. Sometimes you can't talk about certain things when you know each other. It's a, a, a freedom, a liberation. They don't, they don't feel embarrassed because they never have to see you again, isn't it? That's what it's like. If the customers like, they can meet me again. 
I've only been doing this for a few months and I've had four or five customers. And my first one has asked to see me again. High five. You have obviously a bit of a stud, mate. I'd be proud of that. And despite her reservations, it looks like our Shingo here is having quite the effect on Vicky. These women, in my opinion, will fall for you. They'll feel something for you. Do you want to fall in love? Like, not at work, but do you want to fall in love with someone in general? <laughs> I like falling in love. I love falling in love, mate. It's the best. I fall in love practically everywhere I go. <laughs> it's so much fun. You have essentially got loads of girlfriends. You're a massive player. This isn't as weird as I thought it was going to be. It's actually quite nice. Girls are going to fall in love with you, you know. That's a fact. I'm really confused. I was expecting it to be, to be very creepy and to feel really awkward and to not relax once. I was so wrong and I really misjudged it. And I'm big enough of a woman to admit that. He is probably providing more comfort to these women than their husbands most of the time. I think out of everything I've seen today, paying for cuddles, making yourself a girlfriend pillow, the fact that a woman isn't getting just a conversational peace of mind from her husband is the saddest thing, like, and I'm actually really upset. <laughs> there you go. If you're after some instant love, Japan probably has a service for you. Ever since Daft Punk strapped on their cyborg helmets, it seems like every electronic artist has tried to liven up their act with a crazy mask. But how many acts do you know who wear this sort of helmet with an animatronic dick for a nose? None. That's why you've got to love Ricard Farche, the only member of the band Ankle Pants. Ankle Pants has released over 25 records, played gigs all over the world and has over half a million hits on YouTube. So he's not just a pretty face. So we've sent Brent Zillwood to Berlin to find out more about the man behind the music and the nose cock. Now, I'm quite prone to calling people dickheads uncontrollably because of my Tourette's. But this time I can get away with it because this guy is a dickhead. Um... Oh, my God! Greetings. <laughs> Oh my god, you scared the hell out of me. You must be ankle pants. Greetings. I'm Brent. Really nice hey, to meet you. I felt like I just stepped into an X-rated Tim Burton film there. Yeah, slightly pornographic. Yeah, slightly, just a little bit. I mean, does it smell in there like it looks? Yeah, it, it does smell quite nice in here, actually. Yeah? It tastes better, too. <laughs> Are you quite famous in this area, then? I wouldn't say famous, but... Uh, people give you weird looks. Yeah. Let's take a walk and let me see how yeah, people yeah. stare up. Many times. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, why the cock nose? Uh, it was an idea with me and a friend to make a space creature porn film. Wow, OK. And it just evolved into this music personality. Yeah, yeah. The whole image, the look, the dick, does it ever get in the way in social situations? After a show, it just comes straight off and... Oh, right. I, know, I don't talk to people after the show. No one ever makes the association. I feel quite privileged right now. Yeah, you're very special. First, you know, you're meeting... You're a very special boy. <laughs> when I first saw ankle pants, it actually terrified me. The level of detail within the scrotum on its head was just... It was just too much at first. It literally looks like a set of bollocks on your head. I mean, you know, he could get a lot of fans just because of how provocative it looks. Now we got to know each other better, we're off to the Ankle Pants Workshop to take a closer look at his scrotum face mask. This music artist has a proper day job, working in special effects, designing latex models, prosthetics, and animatronics for the movie industry. And that's why his Ankle Pants mask is so lifelike, and his penis so versatile. Can I try it on? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Just don't rip it too All hard. Right, you put it on me. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait, can I do the uh, the windmill? No, it's a bit oh, it's stiff. Not that... Should we touch noses? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's because this is how, I guess, you say hello in this industry. <laughs> can you take it off because yeah, it's like yeah. suffocating? Yeah, you don't have a mouth hole, so... <laughs> 
Now, I hear you use animatronics in your mask. Yeah. Is that like this here? Yeah, yeah. The... This is the internal mechanism of, uh, of Ricard Farce. Here we have the, the motor that operates the up and down yeah. movement. Oh, yeah, mine does that. Yep. Yeah. The left and right, which you cannot achieve. You don't know that. Oh, don't talk to me like that. <laughs> um, How expensive is it to make something like this? You know, when you're working in, you're into animatronics and the control systems and the software, and it starts to be in the tens of thousands pretty fast. That's quite a lot for a bit of dick. Yeah, yeah. But Ankle Pants isn't just a penis. He's also about the music. This is the centerpiece, which is a custom-built microphone controller. This uh, controls the pitch of my voice, and it also controls uh, oh. the, the penis, penis at the same time. Oh. Can I yeah. try that? Can I yeah, try go that? For it. So, so I'm now. Follow the button. Oh, I'm moving your dick. Ah! Feels really nice, actually. <laughs> I kind of twist it. Yeah, twisted oh, yeah. just like oh, that. Oh, yeah, you like just that? Like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty yeah. good, actually. There's a whole bunch of different voice effects. Uh, like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah, so this... This actually has juices that come out of it, which... I don't think I'm getting paid enough to do this. That's it's my, my um, precious seed. seed. It's salty. Is it? Should it taste salty? I'd love to see an ankle pants gig, and he's invited me to one in Spain. <laughs> but not just to watch. What do you think about joining me in Madrid and take our large <laughs> friend here <laughs> for a little spin? You want me to wear this? Yeah. On stage. Yeah, you could do some pirouettes and hop on three legs. Yeah, hell fuck yeah, I'd do that. Break dance in vagina. Can I try this on now? Yeah, I mean, let me assist you. We'll, we'll make you look a bit more presentable, but. Uh -huh. Oh, oh. I feel like I'm being violated, but I don't know from where. This is probably the fucking weirdest thing I've done in the 24 years I've been alive. Ankle pants. Here's something out of this world. <laughs> to be honest, I wasn't expecting to go to Madrid and be on stage looking like a fanny. But hell, he's invited me. No one expects to go on stage looking like a fanny. Oh, unless you're coming here west. So, I've arrived in Spain, ready for my debut as an ankle pants backing dancer at the Get Mad Festival, wearing a vagina mask. This is my moment. So here we are at the headquarters of the festival. We've got all the posters up. I can see ankle pants name here. I'm a little bit nervous. Whatever happens, happens. It's just gonna be great. It's just gonna be so fun. Ankle pants. I don't know. How are you feeling at the moment? Uh, not so good. Why? Oh, I've just had bit of like sickness going on. Oh, right. <laughs> Are you a bit nervous? Because I can hear it upstairs. No, I'm not nervous about that. All I think about is the equipment. And as soon as I see it connect, I'm totally happy. Right, I'm not going to hold you any longer because you've got so much bloody work to do. Mm. Um, dude, get on with it. Have yeah, a great sure. show and I'll be on stage with you as well. Go on, mate. So poor Ankle Pants isn't feeling well, but time has come to take the stage and maybe discover if it's possible to puke inside your own cock and balls. The crowd's acting like they've never seen a bloke with a dick face perform electronica before. Oh dear, it doesn't seem to be going to plan, and Ankle Pants looks a bit down in the bell end. This gig needs help. Somebody call for the dancing badge. Brent's funky flange gets the crowd on their feet, and soon everyone is loving a bit of face cock. Eyes open, always open. It's now closing your way. I'm still buzzing. I never thought in a million years I'd be dancing on stage, wearing this vagina, 
four ankle pads. This is like a strange dream. I thought that was amazing. But ever the gentleman, I have to ask ankle pads, how was it for you? The amount of people that you got dancing, it seemed to me they absolutely loved it. Yeah, yeah, it was good. My hands, man, they're like literally still shaking from the performance. I mean, I would never in a million years get up on stage and do that, but because I had this on, yeah, yeah. I had like the confidence of a king. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. See you soon, buddy. Cheers, man. Cheers. If ever I get nervous again, I'll just try and imagine I'm wearing a minge on my face. So, that's ankle pads. Provocative, unique, and hopefully not available for children's parties. So, what have we learnt tonight? Well, if you want to love her for the air, look no further than Bobby Mare. An animatronic dick can help you dance, and a horsey lady can help you prance. If you're angry, just smash a telly to bits. And Japanese mouse mouths have got great tits. <laughs> it's a weird world out there, and we love it. Good night. <laughs>